In today's lecture, we will solve problem 13.44, which is about bevel gear force analysis, and this is the diagram for it. And the problem we are given that the diametral pitch is 10. There are 18 teeth on gear 2. The pressure angle is 20 degree, and 30 teeth on gear 3. The force transmitted or tangential force on gear 3 because of gear 2 is 25 pound force. We have to find the reaction forces at bearing C and D. This will be the point where the forces will be exerted. Gear 2 is rotating in this direction like this. So gear 3 or shaft B will rotate like this. So a radial force on gear 3 will be exerted like this. Since bearing D is taking the thrust load, so the axial or thrust load on gear 3 will be in negative y direction like this. And the tangential force on gear 3 will be like this. This means out of the page. We can take this right angle triangle and this is the angle gamma because gear 2 is pinion. This line will be the base and this line will be hypotenuse and this line will be perpendicular that is the radius of the pinion. So tangent gamma will be equals to perpendicular by base. Perpendicular as the radius of gear 2 and base as the radius of gear 3. Now if we multiply to n nominator and n denominator we will get diameter of gear 2 and di divided by gear, diameter of gear 3. d is equal to module m into n. So d2 is equal to m n2. Hence d2 by d3 is equal to m n2 divided by m n3. Cutting m we will get d2 by d3 is equal to n2 by n3. So tangent gamma is equal to n2 by n3. n2 is 18 and n3 is 30. So gamma is equal to tangent inverse of 18 divided by 30. That will give us 30.96 degree. And tangent of capital gamma will be equal to d3 by d2 which in turn is equal to n3 by n2. n3 is 30 and n2 is 18. So capital gamma will be equal to 59.04 degree. From this diagram we can find out this angle capital gamma. This is the base of this right angle triangle. This is its perpendicular perpendicular as the radius of gear 3 and base as the radius of gear 2 so tangent capital gamma is equal to d3 by d2 or r3 divided by r2 or n3 divided by n2 as we know that force is exerted at this point so we need to find out this distance for that we will need the radius of gear 3 which can be found out from the diameter of gear 3 as d is equal to mn to n or d is equal to n by p where p is the diametral pitch d2 is equal to n2 divided by p n2 is 18 and p is 10 so d2 is equal to 1.8 inches and r2 will be 0 0.9 inches and d3 will be equals to n3 divided by p n3 is 30 so 30 by 10 is equal to 3 inches and radius of gear 3 will be equals to 1.5 inches so this is half of the 3 inches so to find this distance we need to find out this distance and then divide it by 2 and subtract it from the radius of gear 3 it will give us r average for gear 3 now let's take this triangle this line is parallel to y axis and this line which is hypotenuse is existing on this line so this angle gamma will be equals to the angle between the hypotenuse and line of the right angle triangle and y axis and this hypotenuse is equal to this which is 0 0.5 inches and this triangle this is the base this is perpendicular and this is hypotenuse so p is equal to h sine capital gamma putting the values p is equal to 0 0.5 sine of 59.044 which will give us 0.4288 inches and when we divide this p by 2 it will give us 0.2144 so we will have to subtract this from d3 that will be equals to our average so 1.5 minus 0.2144 that will give us 1.3 inches this distance is 9 by 16 inches we need to find out this distance and then add that with this distance it will give us this distance for that we will have to find this distance first which is the base of that triangle then we will divide that base with 2 and add that b by 2 with 9 by 16. So 9 by 16 plus 0 0.5 cos of 59.04 divided by 2 which will result 0 0.6912 inches. So d2 is 1.8 inches and d3 is 3 inches. This is n2, this is p, this is n3 and this is p. Gamma is 30.96 degree and capital gamma is 59.04 degree. That we have a shaft b. Let the torque obtained at the shaft b is 3 out. This is y axis or axis of the shaft b. This is x and z axis. This is point g where the force is exerted on gear 3. And the distance from y axis up to that point g is r average. The radial force on that gear is along the radius wr. This is how the tangential force will be exerted. This will be the thrust or axial load. wr is a negative y direction because the bearing d is mounted over here which is taking that thrust load. So the axial force should be against it. That is why it is in negative y direction. direction. Wt which, which is the transmitted load is given to be 25 pound force and wr is equal to wt which is 25 tangent of 20 cos of gamma but since we are trying to find out the radial force on gear 3 for that the angle is capital gamma so we will have to put tangent 59.04 instead of tangent gamma so wr is equal to 4.682 pound force.
and wi is equal to 25 tangent of 20 sine capital gamma that will give us 7.8 lbf now from these three forces we can find out the reactions at bearing c and d now write these forces or the w in the form of unit vector i j k now this is the point c where the bearing c is mounted now these are the reaction forces at bearing c again write these forces in unit vector form bearing d is mounted at point d these are the reaction forces at bearing d take all these forces means the reaction forces in positive directions and write the reaction forces at point d in unit vector form as well and this is the r average which we already have calculated let this is the point e we already have calculated the distance between point d and e which is equal to 9 by 16 plus 0 0.5 cos 59.04 divided by 2 it's cos not the sine cos 59.04 so d e is equal to 0 0.6912 now the distance from d to g is r d g right at an unit vector form so d e j plus r average i the distance between point d and c is 5 by 8 inches and when we move from d to c we are moving in negative y direction so write their distance in unit vector form with unit vector minus j j now let's take the moment at point d e, r d g cross w plus r d c cross f c plus t out t out will be written with unit vector minus j because if you curve your fingers of right hand in the direction of rotation the thumb will show negative y direction this is r d g this is w this is unit vector okay. this is rdc and this is fc this is t out first of all take 1.3 i and multiply it with these three values i cross i will give us zero so multiply 1.3 with 7.8 so 1.3 i cross minus 7.8 j will give us minus 10.14 k now multiply 1.3 i cross 25 k it will give us 32.5 into minus j because i cross k is equal to minus j into minus 32.5 because there is minus sign with 25 as well so as a whole it will give us 32.5 j now take 0 0.6912 j cross the i component of the w and k component of the w don't take j component of the w because j cross j equals to 0 j cross i will give us minus k and 0 0.6912 cross 4.682 will give us 3.24 and there is minus sign as well with minus 4.682 so minus 3.24 into minus k it will give us 3.24 k j cross k will give us i and minus 25 cross 0 0.6912 will give us minus 17.27 so as a whole we will get minus 17.28 i now in this j cross i will give us minus k and when it is multiplied with this negative sign it will give us positive sign so as a whole we will get 0 0.625 f of cx k similarly j cross k will give us positive i so as a whole we will get minus 0 0.625 f cz i so taking moment at point d we will get this equation now take the j terms so torque will be equals to 52.5 lbf and inch now take the k components of this equation equalize it to 0 and then rearrange it for f of cx it will give us 10.14 minus 3.24 divided by 0 0.625 which will result in 11.04 pound force now take the i components and equalize it to 0 and then rearrange it for f of cz it will give us f of cz is equal to 17.28 divided by 0 0.625 which will result in 27.648 fcz is equal to plus 27.6 46648 not minus 27.648 f of c is equal to sum of square of this value plus square of this value all under the root it will give us 29.8 lbf now for reactions at bearing d take the sum of forces in x direction equals to 0 so f of dx plus f of cx minus wr equals to 0 putting the values we will get f dx is equal to minus 6.358 lbf now sum of forces in z direction equals to 0 it will give us f dz plus f cz minus wt is equal to 0 put in the values f of dz is equal to 52.65 lbf now sum of the forces in y direction equals to 0 so f dy minus wa equals to 0 so f dy equals to wa which is equal to 7.8 lbf to find fd square this value and this value and this value then sum these three values it will result some value so take under root of that value it will give us fd which will be equals to 53.6 lbf